the other. This is the day that the Lord hath made. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but I'm glad in it today because this is the day that God made. If man had made it, it would have been all messed up. But everything is perfect with God being in charge. I'm Apostle Dr. Gloria W. Wright, and you've tuned in to us streaming live here at WAIN TV Studio and WAEN TV Studio. We want you to know that we're here at 3105 Washington Road in East Point, Georgia. We are Dayspring International Ministries, and we'd love to have you come and join us here in the studio, for truly, it's a good thing. We have good times here every Sunday, so we would love for you to come and be with us here in the studio any Sunday morning. Hallelujah. want to, first of all, before we really begin, like to pray, as we often do, for the nation, pray for families, pray for marriages, pray for prisoners of war, prisoners who have committed crimes, pray for babies and children who are out of school right now, that they will be safe, pray that there will be no terrorism in any country, and we know that it continues and it continues, but there's nothing wrong with praying against it. We pray against all that which is evil. So we thank you for tuning in. We are here again, as I said, at 3105 Washington Road, and we are Dayspring International Ministries. Uh, you can reach us at 10705, Post Office Box 10705, Atlanta, Georgia, if you'd like to send a prayer request or if you'd like to send a donation. We thank you for tuning in. May God bless you and yours richly. Let us pray. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this beautiful day you granted us. We know when we got up today, the sun wasn't shining, but we know that the sun really is shining if you spell it S-O-N because the sun shines at all times Thank you even for the rain, because some people really need rain for their, their gardens, for their crops. And, oh, God, let us stop complaining about the rain and about this, that, and the other, for God is in, in charge, and God is good. All the time, God is good. We pray right now for those who are in hospital beds, those who are bedridden, those who are at home uh, who are having problems in their health, and we pray right now for Minister Alonzo and his mother out in Portland, Oregon, Sister Geraldine. We ask that you continue to strengthen her day by day, that she will get back to her old self again. Oh, God, we just depend on you for miracles. We thank you for all the members who have been through here at Day Spring International Ministries. And some have gone out and started their own ministries, but we ask that you bless them wherever they may be. Bless us, God, for we don't know where you will take us, but we follow you. Thank you, God, for all that you've done, and I ask that you will bless again those who are sick, those who are bereaved, those who are in the hospital beds, those who are in the military. Bless us all, for we stand in need of your prayers being answered, oh God. We thank you, Father, for all that you've done and all that you continue to do. This we ask in the precious name of Jesus. And all of us said together, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. You know, today, God has given me a special message for you. And it's not that I thought of it, because I was trying to preach about something else. But you know something? If you will obey God, you can't go wrong. God has given me the scripture in Proverbs. I'd like for you to turn with me to our scripture lesson, which can be found in Proverbs, the 12th chapter. Proverbs, the 12th chapter. Proverbs, the 12th chapter. Amen. 
We'd like to read verses 17 through 22. And again, I'd say 17 through 22 of Proverbs 12. Now, today I will be reading in the Good News Bible because I want this Good News translation to reach those who are not really Bible scholars but who really need help in understanding the scriptures. So I pray you have it now, Proverbs 12, 17 through 22. And it reads on this wise. When you tell the truth, Justice is done, but lies lead to injustice. Thoughtless words can wound as deeply as any sword, but wisely spoken words can heal. A lie has a short life, but truth lives on forever. Those who plan evil are in for a rude surprise, but those who work for good will find happiness. Hello, somebody. Nothing, nothing bad happens to righteous people, but the wicked have nothing but trouble. And verse 22, the Lord hates liars but is pleased with those who keep their word. I better repeat that one. The Lord hates liars, but is pleased with those who keep their word. Father God, I ask that you will right now bless these lips of clay. May I speak those words that you give me to say to your people today. And I pray that lives will be transformed. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. I thank you for reading along with me. I'd like for you to know that today I will be speaking on the subject, Truth Never Lies. Truth Never Lies. Now, when we read the scripture... I want to put emphasis on verse 19 of 17 through 22. And that is a lie has a short life, but truth lives on forever. And the reason it lives on forever, truth never lies. Truth is that which frees us. Hallelujah. I want to just say today that We're in an age now where everyone finds themselves looking at television, reading the newspaper, or reading online what is being said. And it's really difficult to decide what is truth and what is a lie. Because a truth can never die and it lives on and on. But a lie can be How do I say this? A lie can be made to sound like the truth. Did you hear what I said? There are some people who are good at lying. They lie so much that they don't even know when they are telling the truth. And and I thought about this message and I went into the courtrooms and I remember that when you go to court, that you stand before the judge They ask you to raise your right hand and put your other hand on the Bible and that you would declare or swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. How many know that sometimes when they don't tell the truth, the truth will trip them up because truth never lies? You see, what we have to remember is... We are supposed to be children of God. We're supposed to follow his son, Jesus Christ. So really and truly, people who have been born again, people who have surrendered their lives to Jesus Christ, are not supposed to be lying, especially when they know they're lying. 
Oh, maybe I'm talking to you. I'm sorry if it hurts your feeling. But we are supposed to be truth bearers. We're supposed to tell the truth. As some people say, tell the truth and stay in church. I'm here to tell you that when you follow Christ, you will learn as Thomas learned that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So when you have Jesus in your life, you cannot help but be with truth. Hello, somebody. I want to say that we keep hearing about the word fake news. We keep hearing about that which is not real, that which is counterfeit, that which is a knockoff, that which is not authentic, that which is phony. It seems to be all that we seem to talk about lately. So when you find yourself with your friends or your family members and they tell you something, you begin to wonder, are they telling the truth or are they lying? Because you get to the point you get paranoid, you don't know who to believe. But you have to remember now that God is a discloser and God will reveal who is lying and who isn't. Because you cannot tell a lie but only so long. Hello, somebody. A lie has a short what? A short life. But truth lives on forever. Now, I saw a sign in the courtroom one time. It says, when you come before the judge, tell the truth the first time. Then you won't have to remember what you said. You see, when you lie, you got to think about what do you say next. And when they ask you the same question, you can get confused if you've told a lie. But if you tell the truth, the truth will be the truth today, tomorrow, and forever. You can, you, you can just take this to the bank. If you tell the truth, you'll always remember what you said. Uh, of course, unless you have dementia or Alzheimer's. Most people, when they tell the truth, they remember that this is the truth. But when you have to lie and you look that person in the eye and you say, well, uh, mm, let's see. Uh, then you begin to lie. I believe that those who know the Lord will know that you're lying. Because I've learned through my studies that the eyes are the windows of the soul. That when you look at a person in his or her eyes and they tell you a lie, it's something about lying to your face. That's why your mom and them used to tell you, don't you stand there, boy, flat-footed and tell me a lie and look me right in the eyes. Because when you look at someone and tell the truth, they are saying, or tell a lie, they are saying, now I know he's lying. Because some people have a certain twitch or a certain thing that they do when they lie. Uh, there was a movie where the young man, every time he told his wife a lie, he did some kind of funny thing. You know what I mean? It is, you know what I mean? Uh, you know what I mean? So there are people who do lie, but their lies are consistently told a certain way. So what we want to say about lying today is, first of all, the truth never lies. And that's because Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life. So let's look at some things here. I looked at Numbers 23, 19, and it says, God is not a man that should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall not make it good? That is not going to happen, because God is not a man that would lie. Men do lie. But what we're going to say today is that we can depend on what God says to us. What God says to us, we can take it to the bank. Truth stands the test of time. Lies are soon exposed. So that Proverbs twelve nineteen is the one I want us to focus on. There are many quotations about lying. There are many scriptures about lying. There are songs about truth. His truth is marching on. His truth will set you free. Truth never changes. It is applicable to today. 
It is applicable to tomorrow. It is applicable forever. Truth is associated with God's character. So when you're hooked up and tied up and tangled up in Jesus, you're connected to God. And then that becomes a part of your character. Some people will say, your reputation precedes you. So when you go out into a world to meet people, they will talk about you. They'll say, see that man right there? He'll tell you a lie in the blink of an eye. You don't want people saying that about you, do you? I want it such that when I speak, people believe what I say. I don't know if you feel that way, but there's nothing like having your character assassinated. But worse is having your own character assassinated by you. You know, there'll be people who will lie on you. But if you can always tell the truth and people can say, well, if she said it, I believe it. But if he said it, don't believe it. Child, don't believe it. Because he will lie in a minute. Now, you don't want people saying that about you. But we do know that this is God's character to be truthful. And God is not a man that would lie. Hallelujah. So then let us look at some other things that I found when I was in my quiet time. Some people say that they think that truth is a punchline. If you notice right now, everybody's talking about the White House, what the president said. They're talking about what the chief of staff said. And they're saying that this person in the White House lied and that person lied and this person lied and that person lied. So you don't know what to believe. That's why you need to be spiritual so that you can discern who is saying what and what you are to believe. Hello, somebody. And there was a movie one time, I think it was about Navy men, and it says, one man said, you cannot handle the truth. Can you handle the truth? And that takes me to another point. I'm writing a book, and it's entitled 100 Things, 100 Plus Things You Should Know Before You Marry. The worst thing to have in your marriage is to start out with lies. Did you hear what I said? Lies will, lies will kill your relationship. Because in marriage you need trust. It, it's a trust factor that you need in marriage to make it work. Most marriages break up because there is no trust in that marriage. Most relationships break up because persons do not trust one another. When you violate trust, you have really messed up. Because sometimes all we have is our word. All we have is that, that we will do what we say, our deeds. So what we need to realize is that truth is important for many reasons. Truth is important because it gives you credibility. Truth is important because it gives you character. Truth is important because you get recommendations because they say you are a good person. You can be trusted. But when you have a history, everybody say history, a history of lying, there's no telling where you will end up. Now, some people have asked me for a recommendation. Maybe they've ever... Maybe they've asked you for a recommendation. But one thing I can say about me, if you ask me for a recommendation, I'm going to tell the truth. I'm not going to sugarcoat it and make it appear that you will miss this or miss that. If you ask me, I'll be nice, but I'll tell the truth. And so I used to tell my students when they would come with a recommendation form, I said, now, are you sure that you want me to fill out this recommendation form. Because I am going to tell the truth. I haven't seen the questions, but I am going to tell the truth. Because the truth will set me free, and the truth will set you free. And see, when you lie 
on an application or you lie in a marriage or you lie in a relationship, it will soon catch up with you. I never shall forget when I was counseling at my wedding chapel and the young man and the young lady were getting ready to get married and we were asking very personal questions. And I asked him, had he ever been to jail? He says, no, ma'am. You've been arrested? No, ma'am. Do you have any children? No, ma'am. Then later on, the second session, I asked some of the same questions. You see, you have to tell the truth the first time. And I said, do you have any children? And he said, no. And then later in the conversation, I said, have you ever been arrested? And he said, well, it wasn't an arrest, but I was picked up. So the girlfriend is looking at him. He said, I was picked up because I didn't pay my child support. She said, child support? I thought you said you didn't have any children. And he said, oh, you know, I told you about Betty. She got pregnant when we went to high school. I, I told you about that. But you see, lies will catch up with you one way or another. So then if you start your marriage out with lies, you won't get very far. Because every time you go out, every time the phone rings, it sets off a, a, an alarm. Is he, say, is he going to the store or is he going somewhere else? Is that really his sister on the phone or is it somebody else? You don't want to plant doubt in people's lives and in their minds if they are in a relationship with you. So this is why I guess the Lord gave me this idea of talking about truth because truth has a lot to do with where you go in life and how far you get in life. Have you ever had to tell a white lie? Some people say, well, I just told a white lie. Now, what's a white lie? They say a white lie is a little lie. Well, I won't be able to tell you what a black lie is, but anyway. But as you read the Holy Scriptures, Jesus himself told Apostle Paul that I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. So as I get ready to close this message today, and we're talking about truth never lies, Jesus must be the way in your life. If you want to go someplace, you follow Jesus. I don't care how many GPSs you have, you follow Jesus. Because sometimes a GPS will take you off track. The streets may have changed names. But if God says, follow this, but don't follow that, you follow Jesus. You need to know that the truth will set you free. You need the truth sometimes to find more truth. But if you tell a lie, you're going to find that you're in a web of lies. As I close, there was a song when I was growing up, and it was called Smiling Faces Tell Lies. You remember that? I think the Manhattan sang it, the, the Dramatic sang it, the Temptation sang it. But there are people who smile in your face and tell you a lie. And the song says, smiling faces sometimes pretend to be your friend. Hello, somebody. Smiling faces show no traces of the evil that lurks within. But you know something? Whether you are lying on your job, lying before you marry, Lying to your children. Whatever and whomever you're lying to, it will catch up with you sooner or later. I, I believe sooner than later. There are people who have lied so long again they don't know what the truth really is. Now, if you had your child before you got married, tell your child the truth. Why? Because one day you're going to celebrate your anniversary and that child is going to begin to add up. If you got married in 72 and I was born in 71, something's wrong with that. 
Tell them the truth. You will teach them to tell the truth. Just like we are to follow Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the light. Your children will follow you because you'll say, Mama will tell me the truth. Daddy will tell me the truth. No matter how much it hurts, tell the truth because the truth will keep you from feeling guilty. The truth will keep you out of the psychiatrist's office. The truth will keep you from messing up a relationship that was supposed to flourish, and now it's doomed. People remember. There are politicians right now who are lying, but I'm here to tell you that when you get before a commission or get before a Congress or get before a Senate, you have to tell the truth, as the people say, tell the truth, and stay in church. I'm here to tell you, if you tell the truth, the next person who comes up will confirm that you told the truth. But if you lie, the next person will come up and confirm that you are a liar. And once you are branded a liar, they say there's no truth in you. I want you to be more Christ-like. And the only way for good things to come out of you or come out of me is that we have to be connected to Jesus Christ. We have to surrender our lives to Jesus. Jesus is our role model. We are supposed to tell the truth even when it hurts because eventually it will come out anyway. So I say to you today, read the word of God. Find out what God is saying to you when it comes to truth. If you lie on an application, you may one day find that after you've gotten all of these uh, raises and all of these promotions, and then it will come out five years later that you lied on your application. There goes your job. If you lie before you get married, you say that there's no mental illness in your family, and everybody knows that your uncle Jojo is in a mental institution, Tell that lady who's going to marry you that your Uncle Jojo has a problem. He has a mental problem. Tell it in the beginning. Tell it before somebody else tells it. And then when you begin to tell the truth, you won't have to try to cover up every day. You don't have to watch what you're going to say. Because I'm here to tell you, if you lie, you're going to have to keep thinking, what did I say to him or her last? Then if you lie to others, you'll lie to yourself. And, and of course, if you lie to yourself, it's even worse if you lie to God. You have to confess your sins. Don't lie about them. Lord, I confess my sins. I've fallen short. I, if I confess my sins, he's a just God and he's willing to forgive me. Lord, forgive me. So you ask the Lord to forgive you. You ask your loved ones to forgive you. Even if it's a lie you told years ago. And you don't want to die with a lie. So then you say, this is going to hurt you. This is going to hurt me. But I simply must get this off of my chest. I lied about such and such. And I pray you'll forgive me. A lot of times people will. Sometimes they won't. But at least you won't be half crazy trying to keep the lie. So I say to you today, lies, lies, lies. They will cause you disaster in your life. Always look to God to help you to tell the truth, no matter how much it hurts. Because it hurts now if you tell the truth, but later everybody will be hurt. I pray God's blessings upon you and your relationships I pray that when you prepare to get married, that you'll tell all of the truth, nothing but the truth, because somebody who doesn't want you to marry will come and tell your bride he's lying. Or somebody will tell your groom, lies, lies, lies. Somebody will say to you, you don't know the Lord because you keep saying you do, but your fruit says otherwise. You say you don't use profanity, but your mouth tells us otherwise. I say, tell the truth the first time, then you won't have to remember what you said. May God bless you richly. Keep away.
from the lies because the truth never lies. Amen, amen, and amen.